Hi guys, it's Keely. Um, today I'm going to be doing a little sort of tutorial on how I sketch faces. I get a lot of questions about my sketching process and so I thought I would just do a quick little video to show you how I do them. So all I'm going to be using today is this uh, watercolor paper. This is my Canson Montval watercolor sketchbook in 9 by 12 inches. Um, I'm going to be using this uh, Paper Mate Mechanical Pencil. This is the mechanical pencil I use to do all my sketches with because I just love it. Um, and then just this like no name eraser. Um, yeah, my only tip on picking out an eraser is basically just test it with whatever pencil and paper you know that you're going to be using. Um, and make sure that it doesn't smear and that it lifts all of the um, graphite properly. Um, the reason I like to use mechanical pencils is because I hate all of the sharpening and they're just really convenient and you never have to worry about, um, you know, the graphite breaking off without a pencil sharpener or something. So as long as your mechanical pencil is full, you are in good shape. So yeah, let's get started. Um, how I like to start my sketches is basically just before you start, be aware of what you want your sketch to turn out like. Um, know if you want to do like a bust, if you want to do a neck up portrait, know if you want to do a full body, and then go from there, really. Um, I know that I want to do a possibly bust, maybe shoulder up portrait of a girl looking head on at me, and so I kind of already have an idea in my mind of what I want it to look like, and that'll really aid you when you go to mapping out your sketch. So. The way I start every sketch is with a circle. I just kind of make like a rough, sketchy sort of circle like that. This is the base for my head. Um, it's the easiest way for me to do a sketch. Um, I pretty much never start a portrait without sketching a circle for the base first. Um, and then where I like to go from there is to kind of find, with my eyes, the center of the bottom of the circle. Um, and kind of judge from the top of the head to here how long I want the face to be because this little mark kind of symbolizes the chin, where the chin will end. So yeah, now that I kind of have an idea of how long I want the face to be, I can work from there. So I start on the left side, and with also light, sketchy movements, I, uh bring down the sides of the head. I always start with one side and then move on to the next. I don't like to work back and forth usually. Um, I find it easiest if you do one side and then you have an idea of what you want the next side to look like. That's just me personally. Again, none of this is by the books. None of this is like the proper way to sketch. This is just how I like to sketch and yeah. So I bring down the side of the head with light sketchy motions and then I kind of hit the jawbone and wrap it around to meet the chin. And then I repeat the same on the other side. Um, I do a lot of my final drafting, I guess, um, when I go over the sketch in ink. So if something's not perfect, I'm okay with that. Like, for example, this the shape of this jaw. I'm not a huge fan of it, so I'm just going to go over it and I know if worse comes to worst I know in my head what I want it to look like so when I'm doing the inking process I can just you know kind of tinker with it a little bit um, when I'm sketching I like to use the large eraser when I'm doing uh, large portions that need to be erased and then the small eraser on the end of my mechanical pencil just when I'm doing regular small little adjustments so where I like to go from here is to erase the excess um, sketchy circle lines. Um, I find that they tend to just kind of get in the way a little bit when I'm trying to map out the rest of the face, so I just take those out of the equation. Um, again, doesn't need to be perfect, this is just a sketch. Okay, and then I know a lot of people like to map out their head space in the form of um, doing horizontal and vertical lines to, you know, just sort of give some division and, um, a, you know, kind of a guideline for where the facial features need to go. I prefer to do it in um, small circles. So 
for me, I kind of on the paper look where I want my eyes to end up and I do those in small sketchy sort of circles. Um, I tend to kind of look at the space between the chin and the top of the head and I kind of go maybe a little bit lower than halfway. Um, I know the the typical guideline for a proper portrait is about halfway between the chin and, chin and the top of the head for the eyes, um, but I do stylized pictures, you know, so it doesn't need to be exact. And then for the nose, again, just kind of just kind of gauge where you want it to be. I like to bring my noses up a little bit so that I have a lot of room for the mouth. So then I drop in where I want the mouth to be. And then from here, I drop in the eyebrows. This is the part that's really up to you. Well, I mean, all the parts are really up to you. But this part, I find, varies a lot between my portraits and kind of gives the, um, it kind of paves the way for what it's going to look like in the end, where I put the eyes and eyebrows and all that sort of stuff. These gesture marks, um, they can really change how your mind develops the image so just be sure of where they are placed before you move on to the more permanent decisions so now that i have those laid out i move on to the eyes and then i don't really know how to describe how i draw eyes except that i do it like this i start from the inner corner i come up and out and then i wing out the line and once I have the general idea of the shape of the eye that I want, I'll start building in the more specific features from there. So for example, I will thicken up this outer corner and sharpen it up so that it looks the way I want it to. And once I'm happy with how that looks, which I think I pretty much am, I will add in the eyelashes. From here I go from the corner of the end of the eye and then wing out the eyelashes and bulk that up a little bit. Um, and then I add this second little set of eyelashes right here. Um, with eyelashes, my best advice is to think three-dimensionally. Eyelashes, I hate when I see this too and it really bothers me and I hate that it bothers me because it's kind of petty. But um, eyelashes don't just go stick straight out from the eye. You have to think of an eye as a sphere, a three-dimensional object, and you have to think of how the hair grows around the sphere. So eyelashes don't just come straight out. They need to have like a curve and a lift to them. And you have to think three-dimensionally and how they curve around the shape of the eye. So this, in theory, is eyelashes curving around the shape of the eye. So. Again, when I go to do these upper eyelashes, you have to think three-dimensionally. So these will curve out to the side of the eye, and then they'll kind of taper off as you get towards the center and change direction, because if you're looking at eyelashes head-on, they don't go stick straight. They bend. So to give up that fanned-out effect, you just... <laughs> I know I've said this a million times now. You just have to think three-dimensionally. That's the best advice I can give you. Um... So I drop in a little tear duct, and then again with the lower eyelashes, think three-dimensionally. It really gives a lot more um, emotion and interest when you have eyelashes that complement the eye shape properly. So think three-dimensionally, um, you know, mold them with the shape of your eye. Um, I drop in a little pupil, and then for the creases around the eye, I like to give a little underneath one. This one I think I'm going to make a little lower down because of my final intentions for this. Um, that's just what how I want it to look. And then the eyelid, I'm going to make quite a large eyelid that comes down kind of far. Um, again, think three-dimensionally. Underneath the skin, this eyeball continues, so it needs space um, for the eyelid to bend above it. Um, if you want hooded eyes, if you want... Um, you know, eyes with a large eyelid space, you just need to think ahead and kind of um, just, yeah, I don't know, think ahead and um, be aware of the space that the eyeball theoretically takes up in the head, if that's the style you're going for. If not, you can completely ignore it and go from there. So once I have that eye done, I will move to the other one. 
Um, a lot of people ask me how I get my eyes symmetrical. Um, first off, my eyes are never symmetrical. They're always a little bit different from one to the other, and that's totally fine. Um, no one has ever said the eyes need to be symmetrical. Um, but my best advice, if you're struggling with uh, symmetry when it comes to sketching eyes, um, what's, what works for me is taking a picture of it and looking at the picture of the sketch. Because I find that when you're just looking at your sketch, you are still kind of caught up in the idea of what you want it to look like. And once you take a picture of it, it kind of forces you to look at it in a different angle and in a different way. And um, it just kind of helps you see what's going wrong and how to adjust that. Again, that doesn't necessarily work for everyone. That's just what works best for me. So here we are still trying to make this eye even. The second eye, gotta say though, always comes slower than the first one. So, add in some eyelashes. Mm. Oh, no, I almost forgot. I like to add these other, like, smaller ones on the inner corners other little small eyelashes. I just think they're cute. All of these, all of the things I do here, it's up to you if you want to do them, if you want to do them differently. You know, all these sort of things are what makes a style unique. So if you have another way of doing something, do it that way. It is up to you. Okay, so now I have my eyes done. And it's time to drop in some eyebrows. I always go from eyes to eyebrows to nose to mouth. That's just how it works for me. So here I'm going to start with small kind of sketchy sort of lines. And I'm going to work from the inside out. For this particular drawing, I want her to have small sort of dot-like dot or dash like eyebrows but for the purposes of this video I'm going to show you how I normally do eyebrows um, you sketch with small sort of dashy lines to kind of simulate hairs that you don't have to do um, it's just something that gives me a good idea for the texture when it comes to that part um, usually the peak of the eyebrow needs to hit um, at the highest point above the eye. Oh, is that how it goes? I'm not sure. I honestly can't tell you what eyebrows are supposed to look like. But for me, usually, um, the peak of the eyebrow hits above sort of the corner of the eye. And then I just kind of sketch it right in. Um, I like to make the ends of my eyebrows darker than the insides of my eyebrows. It just helps them look more natural. But that's, again, up to you. And then, now that I know what I want my first one to look like, it helps me kind of skip some of those sketchy motions on the second one. There. And if you find that your little circles are interfering with your sketch and are kind of getting in your way of your vision, just erase them. It's fine. You already know where you're going to put your eyebrow now, so no use in keeping it there. Okay. So those are the eyebrows. And then from here I like to move on to the nose. Noses for me are pretty simple. I do two little kind of rough dashes to make sure that it's centered and I try and center it between the space that I have left above the eyebrows. Bring it down, center it, um, do two little dashes and then one beneath it. That kind of is a little gesture for the, the peak of the nose where it hits above um, and between the lips. And then throw in some nostrils. And then from here, I like to go a little in from the um, beginning of the eyebrow. I like to bring it a little in for the bridge of the nose. 
and curve it round to give it a little bit of shape. And again, if you're having a hard time seeing what your sketch is turning out like, just erase those little sketchy lines. You don't need them there. You know where everything's going to be. They don't need to be there anymore if they're getting in your way. So, and there we have a nose. The nose is always what takes me the least amount of time because it's probably got the least amount of detail. And then this is the part where I get a lot of my questions is how I do lips. So, lips for me, I always start on the corner here and sort of do a rounded, lifted shape. It gives a fuller shape to the lips, and it's just the way I personally like to do them. Give a little lifted shape, curve it round, and then bring it curved on the other side. For this one, I think I'm going to reshape the cupid's bow a little bit. Instead of just smoothing over it, I'm going to give a little dip, and then bring it round again. And then we have the shape of the top lip. And then from here, I'll do the little gesture for the seal of the mouth, which in this shape, in this instance, is just sort of an upside down frowny face sort of shape. Um, I do these two little dashes for the corners of the mouth. It's just a little gesture for where the mouth opens. It's, you know, nothing very specific. And then for the lower lip, just bring it down and around. And there's a mouth. So from here, I'm going to pop on some ears. Um, I like to start the ears somewhere between the um, eyebrow and the top of the eye. Then just kind of curve them around and meet up kind of, I guess, where you would imagine the cheekbone starting. And then do that on both sides. And there you have some ears. For the neck, I start it mm, kind of mostly by eye, I guess. There's no real like measurement I can give you for the neck. It's just one of those things you sort of have to eyeball. Because I know that when I try and draw necks proportionate and correct, um, I always find that they look too thick on my drawings. So, you know, just kind of play with it, and if you like next to be a little bit wider, draw them wider, and if you like them to be a little bit thinner, make them thinner. It's up to you. Um, but yeah. And then here I'm just going to pop in some quick hair. I think this girl, I want to have a center part. So I'll just give a little dash there to kind of make a gesture for the center part. And then part her hair, bring it down across her forehead. And then you always want to give a little bit of lift to the hair here up at the crown. Um, it just kind of gives the illusion that yes, this hair is three-dimensional and is in fact coming up off the top of this head. Um, this hair, I'm not really sure what I want it to look like. So I'm just going to draw something kind of fun. Um, hair, I don't really know if I can actually describe how I draw hair because there's really no method that I use. Just kind of go with the flow and see if it works for you and how you like it and you know. But I like it to be very curvy and bendy and have a lot of uh, texture and interest so that's what you like to draw then draw it that way. And just drop in some quick hair here. And there we go. That is how I sketch a person. Um, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to also give her... I think I'm going to give her a tiny little choker here. There we go. And again, all this stuff, once I go over it in ink, is cleaned up. So if that's the way you work, don't feel the need to make everything perfect. Um, if you're just sketching for fun, don't feel the need to make everything perfect. If you're sketching to turn it into a completed drawing from the sketch, you might want to try and be a little bit tidier, but again, you know, just kind of go with the flow. If that's what you like, then do it, because there are literally no rules and no one is stopping you from doing things exactly how you like them to be. So I hope that you guys found this useful. I don't know how much information I actually gave. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, this is how I sketch a portrait. So I hope that you like it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hopefully will be putting out videos every Monday from now on. We'll see how that goes. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and all sorts of fun stuff down below. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye!